Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Purification of the Soul. In the last episode, we were talking about anger and how about how anger is, or extreme anger, is a very uh, evil thing and some of the uh, effects of anger on a person's uh, heart, on his tongue, on his limbs. Let's have a recap uh, about some of that. What are the things that, Gurras, that a person can see uh, on another person who's angry? Uh, change in the color of his face, in his yeah. face, um, that he begins to show anim- animalistic behavior, you know, sweating, thro- punching, kicking, breaking some things, uh, saying bad words. Yes, yeah, swearing, cursing. Yeah. yeah. He may, as he said, lose control of his tongue. Mm. His Walking interaction, up and down, his interaction with other people will change. Yeah. His tone of voice may become aggressive. Mm. Exactly. So, uh, from this we can see that it's very important to cure this, uh, this uh, disease of, ev- of extreme anger. And a person can do this uh, by doing a number of things. First and foremost, he should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this should lead him to having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that would then make him mindful of what he is doing. It will remind him that he is actually a worshipper of Allah. That ultimately it is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he seeks. He should realize that if he behaves inappropriately uh, based on this anger, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't be pleased with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيت And remember your Lord when you forget. And this actually, one of the companions, uh, one of the, sorry, one of the great scholars of the past, Ikrimah radiallahu ta'ala anhu rahimahullah, he mentioned he was a, he was an, a person who was uh, an exegist. In other words, that he would actually give uh, tafsir of the Qur'an, uh, explanation of the Qur'an. And this scholar, he said that the word idh nasit, when you forgot, actually means when you get angry. So remember your Lord when you became, when you become angry. And this is very important. Uh, we can see this, for example, a, he, a person, he gets angry, someone says something to him, immediately he should remember Allah. Uh, ta'ala. And, and this is a, a good um, way of removing that anger Because he should realize he's actually a worshipper of Allah He's actually uh, one of the creation of Allah And he should look at the other person and say Actually he is also a worshipper of Allah And he has feelings just like I have feelings He's made of uh, you know, skin and, and, and flesh and bone Just like I am And I also have feelings just like he has So this will calm down his, his temper the next remedy is to get well acquainted with the virtues of forgiveness. Forgiveness, forbearance, endurance, and in fact restraining anger. Uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said that a man asked for permission to meet Umar radiallahu anhu. And he was given permission to do so. Then the man said to Umar radiallahu anhu, O oh, ibn al-Khattab, by Allah, you do not give us much from the public treasury, nor do you judge between us fairly. And so you can imagine Umar radiallahu anhu, uh, he got angry at this point. He got very angry uh, and he was about to punish the man for this uh, statement. But one of, the, one of his companions said to him, O oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, O oh, leader of the faithful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hold to forgiveness, command what is right, and turn away from the ignorant ones. So we can see, and he said that this person is from the ignorant ones. And so therefore, Umar radiallahu anhu, he complied with this verse and immediately he, he stopped. He didn't get angry uh, with this person. He restrained his anger. And Umar radiallahu anhu would always comply with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one example of that. Uh, he would remember the verses of the Qur'an and this would, uh, he would lead him to compliance. Let's have some more examples where the Sahaba, they actually, uh, they were in a state or they did something... And this actually, uh, they were reminded about this, or they were given a verse from the Quran, and this led them to uh, immediately stopping their things. Can you think of anything? I guess one example that comes to mind is again Umar radiallahu uh, during the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, mm. when uh, it seemed to him that the concessions that the Prophet had made in that treaty. Showed the weakness of the so Muslims. What concessions did the Prophet make? 
He said why not in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah that they would return any any Muslims that went to the Kuffar. Yes, and the fact that they wouldn't be able to do Umrah. Oh, we to because do Umrah. at this point, the Sahaba, they came all the way from <coughs> Medina to Mecca. They got to the outskirts of Mecca in Hudaybiyah. And the Quraysh said, no, you're not coming in. You cannot come in to, uh, to do your Umrah. You have to go back. And I mean, I can imagine once we were driving to Medina and it took, you know, four or five hours. And uh, from Mecca to Medina, the opposite direction. And we were discussing this in the car and we said to ourselves, imagine if the people of Medina turned us away after a four or five hours journey. We would be very upset, we'd get very angry. Okay? But imagine if you went by camel, by horse, and so on and so forth. You came all the way to Mecca from Medina and this led this and, and then they said you can't come in. So yeah, this was one of the concessions. Yeah, so Omar radiallahu and I think was uh, was upset that Muslims, that the Muslims, even though they were upon the, on the truth, are there to give in to these conditions. Mm. So, I think he voiced his displeasure at the Prophet Wasallam and didn't agree with, his, with, his, uh, with, the, with what he had agreed to. And I think Abu Bakr reprimanded him for that, for not uh, complying with what mm-hmm. Prophet Muhammad did. And then I think the ayah was revealed regarding so then after that, uh, Umar Radiyan regretted his, uh, his disagreement. Yeah, because the ayah had clearly shown that what, what the Prophet ﷺ had agreed to was actually something noble, was something good. It was actually a victory or a fath, a victory for the believers. We ha- indeed, we have given you or opened for you a great victory, as Allah says. And uh, actually, as a side point, Umar Radiyallahu Anhu, he, in this occasion, when this ayah was revealed, remember he was... He was angry initially. But when this ayah was revealed from the Qur'an, in the Qur'an, that indeed this is actually a victory for you. When this had been revealed, he went round the streets of Medina on his horse, and he started saying, إِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُبِينًا Indeed, we've opened for you a, uh, a clear victory. And so he started saying this, uh, in other words, showing that he was wrong before. And this is a very important characteristic uh, to have. Likewise, he should frighten himself. And this is another way of you know, reducing his anger. He should frighten himself and remind himself of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to, and to think to himself that actually the punishment of Allah upon me is greater than my punishment upon this person who I'm angry with. If I take revenge upon this man uh, for my anger, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take revenge upon me on the day of judgment. And I'll be, I'm much more in need of forgiveness, and so I should also show forgiveness to this man. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, الرَّاحِمُونَ يَرْحَمُهُمُ الرَّحْمَانِ That those who show forgiveness or mercy, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman, shows mercy to them. He should also warn himself against the consequences of enmity or revenge, and glee at the mi- and, and glee at misfortune of his uh, disputants. He should also rem- remember uh, that he's not free from being afflicted, by any calamity at any time, just like them. So this also should reduce his anger. He should think to himself that, well, you know, I'm not free from this. I might do something bad uh, in the same way. Uh, And also he should think about his ugly appearance. And we spoke about that at the beginning of this episode as well. Uh, You know, the the disgusting appearance that he looks. Uh, Perhaps if a person looks in the mirror, he'll see some of these uh, weird characteristics of uh, the angry person. So she should remember that in this state of anger, he's the one furthest away from the manners of the uh, of the prophets and the noble scholars of Islam. And he shouldn't think. He should think over the cause that invites him to take revenge. So, for example, the cause of the anger may be that the shaitan comes to him and says, "Hey, don't sit there and take these insults. This person, he's just insulted you. Don't sit there and take this." Let's have an example of that from Ali radiallahu anhu. This happened in a, a battlefield. Do you know the example? Uh, was it the one where the, the person who was fighting spat at him? Yeah, exactly, that's the one. Let's ha- hear about that. Um, I believe in the battle he was, he was about to kill uh, one of the disbelievers. And uh, just as he was about to kill him, the, uh, the person spat in his face. So he left him. Yeah, it was a Jew. He was about to kill the Jew in the battlefield, and the Jew spat at him. Hmm. So he left him. 
Uh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't kill, kill him. him. So I think the Jew was very obviously surprised yes. as to why. And he asked him. He asked him why, and he said, "I believe that because um, when you spat at me, I was going to kill you out of the anger exactly. of uh, of you doing something to myself, as yes. opposed to for the sake of Allah." Yes. So we can see how important it is to judge. Why mm. am I getting angry? If Ali radiallahu anhu had killed him because of the anger, then this would have been a big sin upon him. But he realized this and he didn't do this. And we'll talk about this a bit more inshallah uh, after the break. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum.